morning folks. I've um, got a few things to do to the bike. Uh, it's going in for its first service Wednesday, 300 mile service. I've uh, got a few bits and bobs I want to do electrically to it. I'm not going to do it until after it's run in. Um, so, to start off with, I've added a couple of things to the bike already. I've added this little little gizmo here. I've had this on a few of my bikes actually, so it's a good few years old. It just screws up. It, there's one on each side, just screws up to tighten it to clamp it down. It's got a big seating area, so it fits perfectly on there. And that is for my sat nav mount. There we go. That's it. it. Just sits on there, like so, for my sat nav. I've also bought one of these um, USB voltage meter and cigarette lighter. You could use that for a electric pump if you want to. I'm going to use it for a cigarette lighter because I smoke. Right, where to put it? I thought about a few places because there's a few different attachments in in the kit. You can uh, stick it somewhere like that, but where, would it hinder the steering? Um, very possibly, and that would look a bit weird because it's not the right way around, not the right orientation. I've had a bit of a play around and where to put it, uh, and I think still the best place to put it for me would be there. Sits in there quite nicely, doesn't uh, affect any of the workings of the bike. Um, and there's a USB feed there for me, for me sat nav. So that's that's that. A couple of other little bits and pieces I've bought. Um, I've got a Royal Enfield mud flap, so that will go. Obviously, I'm going to warm this up because it's quite stiff. I'll warm that up first, bend it, and stick it on there just to stop a bit more of the crud coming out. And more effectively, to stop my flipping feet getting soaked every time. Because when you're going along in a straight line, the water's spraying at the belly panel. As soon as you steer, whoosh, whoosh, water's coming straight onto your feet. So it might stop a little bit of that. Uh, next thing to fit. There's a little bit of additional lighting. You can get these strips, they're about six quid, five or six quid. Um, again, I fitted many of these to many of my bikes and other people's bikes. That's gonna stick on there. They stick really well. The center piece is all red for stop light and brake light. Uh, sorry, tail light and brake light, so dim and bright. And the outside pieces are indicators, so they will fl flash in unison one of you left or right it. I can lose the wiring quite nicely up under the mountain bracket down and tie it into the back there. Um, I've just done a little bit of exploratory work with the electrics just to see what's what with the power. I've got my multimeter there and here's the plug which feeds the rear light. So you've got, uh, you've got a, what is it? It's a, it's a, it's a yellow and yeah, yellow with a grey trace. On the left in the middle is black, and on the right is white with a yellow trace. Now, the centre black is neutral, or earth, or common. Um, so let's just find out what that does. You set your multimeter, that's AC, you want DC. You want DC, so we've got nothing flowing at the moment. Let's turn the key. We've got nothing there. So my black probes in the earth and the live probes in the white with the yellow trace let's put foot on brake gives us 12 volts off on gives us 12 volts right i'm just going to pause it there and change over this bit oh, magic isn't it so always turn the ignition off when you're doing any electric so back on with the electrics i've swapped this live probe over to the other side the yellow with the white trace and I'm getting 12 volts straight away. So as soon as I turn the key off, nothing. Turn the key on, voltage. That's beautiful. So I now know, and you, you guys now know, that the yellow with the grey trace uh, comes on with the ignition. Now that's important to know because I'm going to fit a fuse, um, a multi-fuse uh, box. Uh, for accessories, it will, it will be fired up by a relay, so your, your neutral from the fuse box goes to the neutral of the battery directly, and then you take the feed, the switch line signal feed, to there, to the uh, live side of the relay, to then fire up the heavy gauge cable from the battery to the fuse box. And the good thing about this fuse box, I fitted a few, um, they have little tiny LED lights 
built in next to each fuse and when the fuse blows the light comes on don't ask me how that science works it's a bit wizardry we have a little compartment on our bikes just here oh, I need two hands for that and they do say that this little section here is for our handbook but unfortunately it doesn't fit our handbook because it's up about 15 mil it's too big so I might utilize this space for the fuse box I'm not sure I might be able to just move a couple of these cables around and just sit it in there. It's fairly small. I will do a video of the install. Um, and that will then feed um, my USB device I'm going to fit on there. It will also feed the LED lights that are going to go on. It will feed the heated grips that aren't going to go on because I don't believe in them. <laughs> but there you go. You, you have a supply from there. I use a multi six multi-core cable from here, from all the different fuses. Run it up underneath the tank and it will be soldered and heat shrinked to each device at the front of the bike. Well, I hope you found this informative. Um, subscribe, if you like, on my YouTube channel for more Himalayan adding bits on. Okay, take care.